Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Robert Chappell, Executive Editor of Madison 365, with your daily news update for Thursday, August 13th. Um, we have some, uh, a few non-COVID news items we'll get to a little later, but first we're going to jump right into the coronavirus um, stuff. Um, the numbers here, uh, the news today is not so good. Um, and uh, one, before I get into that, I just want to mention one other thing. Um, that uh, we're going to switch up the format a little bit here. I'm just going to get through the news as much as I can. Uh, and then we will do listener questions, viewer questions at the end. So drop the questions in the comments, you know, whenever you want to. You don't have to wait till the end to put them in the comments. But if you have a question on anything, put it in the comments. Um, and, uh, and I'll get through all the news and information and then, but don't, don't feel bad if I don't answer your question right away, cause I'm going to get to them all at the end. Does that make sense? Okay. So, um, what's, uh, yesterday I came out here and talked about how the news was pretty good and how I was happy about that. Um, and, uh, after I got done, uh, Stephanie, who does the data for us and, um, uh, and who is also my co-host on It's Only 10 Minutes, the daily podcast, and who's also my wife, um, <laughs> said to me, uh, I don't think the news is as good as you think it is. Because, uh, you know, she's much more deeper in the data than I am usually, and she can kind of sense these things better than I can, apparently. So today, um, you know, she was right. It's not as good. Uh, and, and yesterday's good news was really a... a Seems to have been a lack of tests being reported. Um, so what do we have today? Today, our, uh, you know, for the past four days, every day this week, the positive test rate has gone down. That positive test rate is a really important number because it, it sort of, you know, there's this whole narrative that no, we're just testing more, so that's why we get more positive results. But that doesn't. But if you just go by the percentage of positive tests. It doesn't matter how many tests you do. Like the percentage is what's, what's important. Uh, so the percentage today went up for the first time this week to 7.6%, which is a big jump. 7.6 uh, is not a devastating number by itself. Still under 10%. You really want to be under 3%, but... Um, basically under 10% means you still have mit sort of mitigating the spread of the virus. Um, but 7.5% is about what it was last weekend. And it went down about one percentage point every day this week, down to 4.8 yesterday. And then one day it jumps back up to 7.6. So it's like three full percentage points up in one day. Uh, we have a little bit over 12,000 tests today, which is a better number of tests. Yesterday was only 8,100. The day before that, I was about 10,000. So 12,000 tests today, um, 943 positive results. Uh, we've, there's only been a handful of days, really, since March that we've been over 900 cases. So that's a pretty big number. Uh, our total case count right now is 63,296, which is, um, you know, this is, if you told me <clears throat> four months ago that we would be, you know, easily over 63,000 cases and getting and gaining another 900 to 1,000 cases every day, that seemed, that would have been, seemed like a lot. Um, good news, 8,900 are considered active. That's about the same as yesterday. So that number has actually gone down a little bit. Uh, and did not get bigger today. So that's good that 8,900 are considered currently active. That means they've been either diagnosed in the past 30 days or have been, uh, their, their symptoms have been documented to have gone away. Um, that's a number we need to see keep going down. So that's the one piece of good news today. Uh, I'm sorry, that's one of two pieces of good news today. One other piece of good news I'll give you right now before we get into more bad news is that the rate of transmission is a 0 0.95, which is, that's um, that's the, the average number of people who get infected by each infected person. 
So if that number is less than one, then each round of infection will be smaller than the previous round. Right now, for every 100 people who are infected, those 100 people will infect 95 other people. Does that make sense? So each, each round will get a little smaller. Uh, if that number is over one, it'll continue to spread wider. Um, <clears throat> so that is still under one is good. It was 0.97 yesterday, with, so 0.95 is even a tiny bit better than that. So now back to the bad news. Seven more fatalities. Spread all across the state, none of them in, in Milwaukee County. We have two in Waukesha County, which has had a really tough couple of weeks in terms of the numbers. And then uh, one each <clears throat> in several other counties, Grant, Kenosha, Marinette, Walworth, and Wapaka all had one fatality recorded uh, today. And again, uh, fatalities are taking you know, three to five days to be reported in the data. So these are folks who passed away like earlier in the week or even over the weekend. Um, now, we also still, the number of people who tested positive for coronavirus but died of other causes is still at 18. That's a relatively small number in the over scheme, overall scheme of things. Um, okay, let's talk about localities. Again, today, the, the 943 cases are pretty spread out over the state. Um, Milwaukee County does have a big number today, 270. Yesterday, you remember there had 65. But I, my sense is that there were a whole bunch of tests in the past few days that kind of got backlogged a little bit in Milwaukee County, and they just didn't, because they reported a very small number of tests yesterday. And that was kind of the red flag for Stephanie when she was telling me that, like, the news isn't probably as good as you think. Uh, it was that Milwaukee County had a very unusually low number of tests. Uh, so it goes from 65 yesterday to 270 today. Some of these 270 might actually have been reported yesterday, but didn't make it into the state data for whatever reason. So anyway, uh, Milwaukee County today has 270 more cases than it had yesterday. That's the bottom line. 15.4% of those tests that are reported today were positive. Whether they actually happened today or were processed today or not, it doesn't matter. The, 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 all the cases that are being reported today, 15.4% are positive, which is obviously on the high side. Uh, let's talk through a couple of uh, counties, or not just a couple, of several counties that have pretty high case counts, but also high um, percentage of positive results. Uh, Brown County, Green Bay, has 39 new cases today. Seven and a half percent positive, which is about the same as the state today. Calumet County, which keeps it's a very rural county, they keep showing up on this list, which I don't like. Fifteen new cases today, seventeen point six percent positive tests. Um, Dodge County has eighteen new cases, about eleven point seven percent positives. Uh, Eau Claire County, seventeen cases and seventeen percent positive. Uh, Jefferson County, twenty cases and nineteen point eight percent positive. So these ones that are high are really high. Um, La Crosse County, 13 cases, 13.5% positive. Um, Ozaki County, 14 cases, about 12% positive. Not good. Uh, let's see. Um, Sheboygan County, 18 cases, 9.4% positive. St. Croix County, another rural county that keeps showing up on this list, 10 new cases there, 9.5% positive. Uh, Walworth County, 32 cases, 27.8% positives. Waukesha County, big number today, 113 new cases. Uh, their positive test is not quite as bad as it has been, 8.5%, still pretty high. Uh, but they've been in double digits for the last several days. Wapaka County, 14 cases, 11.86%, uh, almost 12%. Uh, and then Wood County, another rural county that keeps popping up on this list, 12 cases there, 10.2% positive tests. So not, not, I mean, over 10%. Um, a few other spots that have higher case counts, but better percentage of positive tests uh, include Dane County, 36 new cases today, but only 2% positive tests. So that's not terrible. Um, Fond du Lac County, I think I skipped Fond du Lac County the first time because it's 12 new cases and 7.8% positive. So about the same as the state. Kenosha County, 19 cases today, and only 5% positive tests. So that's better. Out of Gamey County, 16 cases and 6.4% positives. Rock County, I'm sorry, let's back up. Racine County, 22 new 28 new cases today, but 2.7% positive tests, so that's better. 
Rock County, 15 cases, 6.3% positive. Sauk County, also here in South Central Wisconsin, 12 cases, 2.8% uh, positive. So that's not bad. And then finally, Winnebago County, 19 cases, 4.5% positive. So not too bad there. Uh, hospitalizations did rise a little bit. Uh, again, hospitalizations... Um, <clears throat> I have a typo in my story. It was, it's 387. If you looked at Madison365.org today, at this story, you would have seen 287. That is a typo that I shall fix. Uh, 387 today, that's 23 more than yesterday and 57 more than a week ago. Again, we're not worried at this moment about hospitals being overrun, right? That's always been the big concern about hospitalization is you're gonna get more people than beds especially in ICUs. Um, so uh, we're not there yet. We're not even close to that, really. But we still monitor hospitalizations because it gives us a sense as to how many people are getting seriously ill, right? And we don't, we want, that to, we don't want that to go up, but it is. It has been. Uh, it, it went up really high two days ago, came back down. Now it's going back up a little bit. Uh, 113 of those are in intensive care units, which is only two more than yesterday. Um, racial disparity is a little bit high again today. 11.6% of today's new cases are Latino. That's a, all, uh, they're, they're 7% of the state's population. So that's obviously on the high side. Um, 23% of the total cases are Latino, which is really disproportionate to the proportion of the population. Uh, black people, 6% of the state's population, 14% of all cases of coronavirus. So that's obviously more than double. There's, they portion of the population and 21% of the deaths. So more than three times as many people, uh, as many black people die from coronavirus as are represented in the overall population. Um, okay. One other uh, bit of, of news that we'll talk about um, that's not COVID related. But it's, it is COVID related, honestly, but not directly. Um, that there's been a, a a very big and significant and troubling uh, uptick in gun violence nationwide, but especially here in Madison. Uh, we've had 143 shots fired incidents in 2020, uh, which is an 88% increase from last year. And uh, this was predicted. Uh, I was in the room when people were talking about this in March and April, um, saying that with everything being locked down, with the economic problems that are brought on by the virus, by the shutdown, uh, you know, the shutdown we had to do, but the shutdown cost a lot of people their jobs and it was hard to get unemployment. And it was, uh, people were frustrated, people were scared, people were, just didn't have anything else to do. Uh, and that has led to um, violence. It has led to people being frustrated and upset and, and tempers running high and shootings happening and then retaliatory shootings happening and, and just go back and forth like that. Um, and uh, unfortunately, it's been allowed to go on kind of because there hasn't been a lot of fatalities from it. There's a lot of sh shots fired. Uh, but on Tuesday, um, an 11 year old girl was in the backseat of a car and got hit in the head. It's not clear to me whether anybody in the car was a target or whether this was just purely accidental crossfire or what. Um, the police haven't said a lot about that yet. Um, but she was, um, She's on life support and community leaders yesterday had a press conference at Penn Park on the south side of Madison, basically calling on people to put the guns down, stop the violence, stop the retaliation, and simultaneously to call on the city and the county and the business community to come together and, and figure this stuff out and, and um, try to create more opportunity, more jobs, uh, more economic development uh, in a sort of an immediate fashion so that people um, don't don't have to turn to crime or don't feel like they have to, and and don't get caught up in the in the cycle of violence. Um, so I, I was at the press conference. I reported on that yesterday, um, and uh, then last night we learned that the young lady Anissa Scott is her name. Uh, her injuries were not anything she could recover from. And so the family announced last night that they'd be, she would be taken off of life support today at 11, 11 a.m., which she was. 
Um, the, there was a community vigil at Bradingham Park at that time. And police confirmed that she passed away. Or they confirmed it a couple hours later that she had died. Uh, so that is now a, a still an ongoing homicide investigation, and it's tremendously heartbreaking. And uh, we will continue to follow that story and um, keep you updated on not only the details of that case, but the community response to all that violence. There's going to be a community meeting this Sunday uh, at Penn Park where sort of the grassroots folks are going to come together and try to hash it out and try to figure out what to do because um, they're feeling like they just don't have a lot of support from the city elected officials and that kind of stuff. So uh, we're going to be there. We'll have a, or we'll, I'd say we'll have a reporter there and we'll have a report from that meeting early next week. Uh, okay. So that's the news that I have. I'm going to take a look at the comments here and um, and catch your uh, questions here. Um, thank you, Margie, for sharing that uh, General Sentinel article. The General Sentinel uh, did have an article today about several, uh, naming and, and profiling several people uh, who lost their lives to um, COVID. Um, Columbia um, County Yes, Columbia County just didn't have isn't on the list today because they had a good day, um, and that's yeah. This the the <clears throat> to to your to your point, Mark. Um, yes, the seven hundred seventy five is the is the daily average, but that's sort of artificially low because of yesterday only having four hundred. Um, I can tell you that the the uh, we do have sort of a 14 day rolling average uh, that the county puts out. We have a, a 14 day rolling average of percent that the state puts out. It is, it's not a bad idea. We, we might, we could probably start to um, incorporate that, uh, especially with regards to the percentage. Um, but it's also instructive, I think. I wouldn't call it reactive necessarily. It is instructive to know on a daily basis how many. Uh, tests are being done and what percent of those are positive. Um, and, and you can still see a trend without reporting the average per day. Does that make sense? But I, I think your point is well taken. Um, and I got the, did I mention Columbia County? Yeah, Columbia County just had a good day and didn't uh, only had one new, new case. And um, Tim Metcalf, yes, Anthony Cooper uh, was at the press conference uh, yesterday. Focus Interruption Coalition is the organization that does sort of immediate response to gun violence in Madison. Uh, and they're working hard and he's fired up and he's not happy about the current situation. Okay, one more thing I want to mention uh, is that uh, we have a new podcast and video show that we're going to launch next week. And I'm going to show you a uh, uh, just a, a one minute sort of preview of that. This is our friend Matt Brongen, who's been with us from the beginning. Uh, he's not, not not like as an employee, but he's been a contributor for Madison 365 since we launched five years ago. And everything he writes is very, very smart and um, very uh, insightful. Um, and uh, uh, so when he came to us and wanted to do a podcast, we said, well, yes, please. So this is, uh, I'm going to show you a one minute video, just Matt telling you what he's planning on doing. And then I'll be, I'll be right back after this. Hey folks, my name is Matthew Brown. And some of you know me, many of you don't, but I'd like to welcome you to finding the warmth of our sun here at Madison 365. On this cast, we're going to be exploring the United States and our present political and cultural moment, particularly through a historical lens. These things are going to be centered on, on really race, um, if we want to, to, to be real about it here. But really, it's, it's, it's more than that. It's trying to understand the present. And I find understanding the present is difficult if we don't really look at the past. And finding a path forward is almost impossible. 
So if you're interested in learning more, digging into U.S. history, particularly around race, and digging into our present moment in time and the opportunities that we have in front of us, tune in every Wednesday to Madison 365, where you can find Finding the Warmth of Our Sun, or you can download it as a podcast with Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify. So thank you, and I hope to be seeing you soon. So there you go. That's Matt Brogan, Matthew Brogan. Uh, we're very excited about that. It's going to be there. Each episode will be only 15 or 20 minutes. It'll be on our YouTube channel. So if you, if you're a YouTube person, subscribe to Madison 365 on YouTube. It'll, we're going to also put the videos on Facebook right here and it's going to be an audio podcast. So if you go, it's, uh, if you go to, um, wherever you get your podcast, sit your Spotify, Apple podcasts, and you go to, uh, you just search for finding the warmth of our son which is a reference to um, a very well-known book on race theory called The Warmth of Other Suns. Uh, and you'll be able to keep up on that. And then um, also, while you're doing that, subscribe to Black Oxygen, which is a terrific podcast hosted by Angela Russell. And uh, so it's only 10 minutes, which is uh, also a very... <laughs> a really great podcast hosted by myself and my wife, Stephanie. Uh, daily... Uh, podcast where we get up to speed on the news of the day, as well as the coronavirus data, uh, and just kind of gets you ready for your morning every ten minutes in just ten minutes every weekday. So that's all I have for you today. Uh, I hope you have a, a wonderful evening and afternoon, and uh, I will see you again tomorrow. <laughs>